Hey everybody, it's Mike from Inflatable Border, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Isle Explorer 3 Hybrid Inflatable Paddleboard. The Isle Explorer 3 is designed to blur every line on the water. It's equally at home as an all-around paddleboard, an adventure touring paddleboard, and it has a seamless transformation to a high-efficiency sit-on-top kayak. And Isle's third-generation technology makes the Explorer 3 incredibly light without sacrificing any performance. The Isle Explorer 3 uses a lot of the same materials and construction elements that you'll find in their Pro Series paddleboards that came out early last year. Inside the Explorer 3, we have a woven drop stitch core that uses a woven fabric material for the top and bottom base layers, as well as a low density but high rigidity drop stitch thread pattern that keeps the board very lightweight while still keeping it extremely rigid. The outer layer of the Explorer 3 is made with a machine laminated fusion PVC material. Now single layer constructions have come a very long way and we've seen this new single layer PVC renaissance in inflatable paddle boards over the last few years. Now we're getting lightweight boards with high performance as opposed to the sort of wet noodle floppiness we used to see a long time ago. This fusion material also helps reduce the amount of glue that's used in the construction process, and it eliminates the errors that were found in hand-glued layup constructions of the past. The deck and the hull of the Explorer 3 are joined together using Isle's Power Fuse welding technique that basically turns the entire board into one continuous piece of PVC material. This reduces and essentially eliminates any air leakage from the board, and it also gives it a much longer lifespan and a more durable construction. In fact, Isle has increased the length of their warranty on the Explorer from just two years with the Explorer 2 to five years with the Explorer 3. The next step in the construction process for the Explorer 3 is adding four PVC stringers along the edges of the board to help increase its rigidity without adding a ton of extra weight. Lastly, we get an outer PVC rail band that's glued around the entire outside edge of the board and two seam reinforcement strips added to the top and bottom of that outer rail band for increased rigidity and durability. Once the deck pad and all of the other features are added to the Explorer 3, it comes in at just 20.0 pounds on our scale and it has a maximum recommended inflation pressure of 17 PSI. Now while the Explorer 3 does share the same basic materials and construction process as the Explorer Pro, it doesn't have the Infinity Fiber Stringers. Now that does keep the Explorer 3 lighter weight, but it's not going to be as stiff as the Pro Series paddle boards. Of course, those are also some of the stiffest inflatable paddle boards we've ever seen. In our bend test with 170 pounds, the Explorer 3 did bend just over 1.8 inches, which is a little bit more bend than our current running average of 1.6. And it is a far cry from the 0 0.8 0 0.9 numbers we were seeing with the Pro Series. However, the Explorer 3 is also significantly lighter. Now, our bend test is a way that we can compare different construction methods and materials and start to get an idea of how it might perform on the water, but how the board actually feels can sometimes be totally different. And that is the case with the Explorer 3. While we had slightly lower than average bin test scores, the Explorer 3 did feel very comfortable on the water. When I first began paddling the Explorer 3, I was really testing out to see if I could notice any bend or flex in the board, and I did feel just a tiny amount of flex at my feet while I was standing and paddling. However, as soon as I stopped looking for it, I didn't notice it again. So it's one of those things where when you go looking for it, you can find it, but you're not going to notice it if you are doing literally anything else. While paddling the board normally, I didn't really feel it flexing in any significant amount. And while sprinting on the board, I did feel it flexing. However, it wasn't greatly affecting the performance. I don't feel like the amount of flex actually impacted the speed or even caused it to bounce off course more drastically than any other board. Now, while bouncing on the Explorer 3, I could generate a fairly moderate amount of flex, actually more than I expected. However, as soon as I stopped bouncing, it settled back down with an extremely smooth and comfortable feel. Now, compared to the Pioneer 3 that had a very tight and springy feel, the Explorer 3 was a bit of a surprise in a very good way for me. By the time I ended my first session on the Explorer 3, I had written down in my notes that it was just a very comfortable experience overall. And so while there is a small amount of flex, 
That is the trade-off that we're making for a very lightweight board that's easy to pack and transport, but it does still produce a very high quality experience on the water. And while looking back at the photos and videos for this review, I did see what looked to be a pretty large amount of flex in the Explorer 3 at first. So I went in and kind of looked a little bit closer and dug in and realized that really what I was seeing was actually a, that little bit of flex combined with the fairly significant rocker profile of this board. Now the rocker is where the board is turned up at the nose to allow it to move up and over choppy conditions. With the Explorer 3, the rocker is a little bit more of a progressive profile and it starts closer to the standing area than in a lot of other paddle boards. And you can see that in our side profile picture. Between the progressive rocker starting a little bit closer and that tiny little bit of flex, the board does appear to be bent more in the water. However, I couldn't feel it while I was paddling. I didn't notice any issues that I would expect to see in a board that is actually tacoing and bending under weight. And really, it just felt, again, like a very comfortable paddling experience on the water. The Explorer 3 is designed to be what Isle calls an adventure touring board, and what I typically refer to as a crossover style paddle board, where it does work well as a touring option, but it also works very well for an all around paddle board. It's 11 and a half feet long, 32 inches wide, and six inches thick, and it has a maximum recommended capacity of 300 pounds. Much like our bend test for rigidity, a weight capacity for an inflatable paddleboard is a starting point, not necessarily the total truth. You have to look at the overall dimensions and shape of the board as well. And with the Explorer 3, 300 pounds is definitely a performance weight limit, where that's the maximum capacity before you'll start to notice any degradation in board performance on the water, but it's not an overall weight capacity like you might see in some other boards that advertise a 500 pound capacity for a similar size board. The Explorer 3 does have a relatively wide tail and it does have a fairly broad nose and it does taper to a point, but not until about the last two feet of the board. So that does help carry the board's width further through the midsection of the board and keeps it feeling extremely stable even when you're adjusting your position forward or back. It also helps increase the amount of surface area of the board that's in contact with the water, which can help resist any rolling or twitching. And while standing on the board, I didn't really experience either outside of what I would normally feel on a 32 inch paddleboard. It felt very comfortable and very stable, and I didn't have any issues moving around. I could easily walk forward and backward and get all the way to the tail with a very consistent stability feeling. The deck pad does change from a brushed texture to a logo embossed texture at the tail, and that helps increase the traction when you are at the back of the board. And while I was standing on the tail, lifting the nose for a pivot turn, I felt the Explorer 3 did a very good job of supporting myself in the board and keeping it feeling very stable and smooth. Overall, I'd say the Explorer 3 has great stability and definitely above average for your standard 32 inch all around board and definitely more stability than a more traditional 30 inch wide touring board. With the intent of the Explorer 3 to be a crossover or adventure touring paddle board, it is important that it does have some amount of speed and efficiency while on the water. While sprint testing the Explorer 3, I was able to maintain an average sprinting pace of about 5.4 miles per hour, and I was able to reach speeds of 5.7 miles per hour for short periods of time. And with those results, the Explorer 3 did very well compared to all around paddle boards, uh, but not quite as fast as most dedicated touring boards. Of course, when you compare the sizing, that makes total sense. It sits right in between the two. Now, when we slowed things down to a pace that you could maintain for a long period of time, I use around 25 strokes per minute, the Explorer 3 really started to come into its own. I was able to maintain an average cruising speed of 3.8 miles per hour. Now, that is very good for an all around paddleboard, and again, not quite to the level of a dedicated touring board, but still very, very good. However, what was most impressive was the Explorer 3's efficiency. While I was at those speeds, if I took a single paddle stroke and then stopped, the Explorer 3 would move about 22 feet on average before I could really feel it begin to slow down. Now that gives it a gliding ratio of 2.0 board lengths per stroke, 
and that is extremely good. Well more than what we'd expect to see in any all-around paddleboard, and it puts it squarely in the same level of efficiency as those dedicated paddle boards that are two inches or more narrower. So while the Explorer 3 may not be a sprinting champion for a short course race, it is an excellent option for anyone who wants to paddle a large distance, especially if you are bringing a lot of equipment for an expedition style or multi-day trip. This is absolutely a board I would recommend for multi-day river trips or coastal trips, or anyone who's really just wanting to go explore a little bit more and bring some of the nicer amenities with them as opposed to a more austere backpacking kit. With its 11 and a half foot length, I really didn't expect the Explorer 3 to completely wow me with its maneuverability performance. However, I was actually very impressed at the end of my testing. Instead of being this very long paddleboard that's difficult to turn, the Explorer 3 was actually surprisingly nimble. On average, it only took about six and a quarter paddle strokes to be able to make a complete 360 degree turn from a standstill. Now it was very impressive, however, it does keep up with this story of the Explorer 3 sitting right between an all-around paddleboard and a dedicated touring sup. And when you do our test in reverse uh, with a reverse sweep stroke, the Explorer 3 turns very quickly, needing only three and a half strokes to make that same 360 degree turn. And of course, with that nice consistent stability, it's very easy to use the back of the board to lift the nose and perform a pivot turn. So now comes the question of, with the Explorer 3 doing so well in our maneuverability test, how is it gonna perform in our tracking test? Now, if you guessed, probably somewhere between an all around and a touring sup, well, you're right. The Explorer 3, once again, does a great job of straddling this line between these two categories. In our 10 stroke tracking tests, I found that the Explorer 3 only deviated an average of about 13 degrees after 10 paddle strokes on a single side. Again, this is really, really good for an all around paddle board, but not quite to the level of a dedicated touring sub. Now on the bottom of the Explorer 3, you'll find just a single universal standard or US style fin box. And the previous versions of the Explorer did have two fixed side bite fins. And these are not really that helpful for anything. Mostly they just create drag in the water. They don't really aid in tracking or stability. So I think it was a really good move for Isle to remove those fins from the board. And that single US fin box still gives you a ton of versatility. You can very easily swap the nine inch touring fin that comes with the Explorer 3 for a shorter fin if you are traveling in shallower waters or using it on rivers. Uh, or you can put in an even larger surface area fin if you want to even improve the tracking performance beyond where it is now. Overall, I think Isle has done a really magnificent job of balancing the tracking and maneuverability performance of this board. And to me, that's what makes it more of a true crossover board rather than a dedicated expedition style touring paddleboard. Now, if you're just glancing at the Explorer 3, it's easy to take a quick look and say, well, there's nothing on that board. There can't be that many features. But that's because Isle has done a fantastic job of balancing its kind of clean and minimalistic look with a whole lot of versatility thanks to its Isle Link system. Now, before we dive into the Isle Link system, we're gonna go over the other features of the board. We've got a two thirds length deck pad that uses a EVA foam that has a brushed texture for most of the standing area, but does transition to a logo embossed texture at the tail for additional traction. There are three carrying handles on the Explorer 3, and the nose carrying handle also has an integrated threaded accessory mount. And this can be used for cameras, fishing rod holders, GPS units, or any number of other accessories. The cargo bungee cords are removable and adjustable, and they use a very simple but very effective cleat system in order to adjust the tension or to completely remove the straps. Under the board, we do have a D-ring on the nose for towing or anchoring. And again, we have that split style US fin box at the tail of the board. The split US fin box allows you to more easily roll the board up and fit it into a slightly tighter roll for even more compact packing. Now the Isle Link system is made up of a series of 19 pairs of polyethylene tabs that are anchored to the PVC stringers on the sides of the board. And these tabs allow you to very quickly and easily adjust the position and size of your cargo areas. They also make it easy to strap down larger items like large dry bags or coolers wherever you want on the board. And they're compatible with Isle's accessories like their Harbor Fishing Crate 
and their Cloud Kayak seat and foot brace, and it makes a very seamless and easy transition into using the Explorer 3 as a sit-on-top kayak. Isle also has a new shoulder strap carrying system that utilizes the Isle Link loops and the Isle Link straps, which allow you to connect two or more Isle paddle boards to raft up together to create a floating dock, or just to make a really convenient way to stick together with your paddling partner as you're floating around. In addition to all the features on the board, Isle also has a new updated kit of accessories that come with the Explorer 3. Along with the board, you'll also get a lightweight stretchable leash, a nine inch touring style fin with a toolless click fin insert, a double action hand pump, a small accessory bag for your fin leash and repair kit that's also a usable dry bag, the Isle Remix three piece carbon fiber paddle, and all of this comes packaged in a new duffel style roller bag. Overall, Isle has created a great set of features and accessories with the Explorer 3 that are high quality and easy to use. The Explorer 3 comes with Isle's three-piece remix paddle. It uses a carbon fiber shaft and carbon fiber handle section to help reduce weight and provide a really nice medium flex profile. The handle adjusts the length with a pin and clip adjustment system that's very easy to use. And it helps keep the handle aligned with the blade every time you adjust the length. On the back side of the handle, there is a length and height scale in both centimeters and inches. And the grip is a traditional palm shape with a lot of uh, great room for your fingers and hand here. It is made of plastic. However, it is a nice sturdy feeling plastic. It doesn't feel soft when I'm uh, using it on the water. And the little bit of texturing that's in here uh, is just enough to give you a little bit of traction, but not so deeply textured that it actually uh, rubs the skin of your, your hand. The main section of the shaft is symmetrical, so it has a pin and clip adjustment at each end. And the blade section actually does have a little bit of adjustable length to it, and that is for when you're using the Remix paddle as a double-bladed kayak paddle. Now the blade itself is a fiber-reinforced nylon material. It's got a medium-sized surface area and a nice rectangular shape. There is a little bit of a scoop here uh, and not a whole lot of rake angle. So it is very easy to use and figure out which side of the paddle to use. Uh, and it does have a nice, again, medium flex profile. So it doesn't feel too soft. And when you wanna move, it's easy and provides a lot of power, uh, but it also isn't so stiff that it takes a toll on your body and tires you out. To switch the Remix paddle into a kayak paddle, all you need is a second Remix blade and you're going to install that onto the other side where the sup handle goes. As a kayak paddle, these rectangular blades do a much better job than the teardrop shaped blades because they are a little bit thinner and narrower. Uh, so they don't tend to wobble or wander in the water as you're using them at a lower angle. The Remix blades do come with a drip ring to help catch any water coming down the paddle as you are paddling and they do actually do a fairly good job of helping to keep you dry while you're kayaking. The Explorer 3 is not only a crossover all around and touring sup, but it's also a crossover stand up paddleboard and sit on top kayak. And it does actually perform well as a kayak as well as a sup. Now this conversion kit is actually extremely comfortable and it is one of the best kayak conversion kits that I've experienced for a paddleboard. The inflatable seat is very comfortable to sit on and it does raise your hips and allows you to have a much more comfortable position for your legs and knees rather than sitting totally flat on the board which can often impede blood flow and cause numb feet. The foot brace allows you to press against the board with your feet and it lets you use your whole body with each paddle stroke for improved efficiency. Now sitting on the Explorer 3 as opposed to standing does change the overall stability. Lowering your center of gravity does help improve your primary stability. However, you do lose out on the ability to make very small adjustments with your body weight and your foot position that you can while you're standing. While seated, I did find the Explorer 3 to still have a comfortable amount of stability, but I didn't feel like I had as much control of that stability as I did while standing and with a slightly narrower 32 inch width that is a little bit more noticeable than on a board like the Pioneer 3 that was very comfortable seated or standing. 
When using the Explorer 3 as a kayak, you do get a little bit of boost in your speed and tracking performance. Having those two paddle blades allows you to take a few more strokes per minute without putting out a whole lot more effort, and it does help even out your course as you get to paddle on each side of the board with every stroke. Now the trade-off is you do lose out on a little bit of maneuverability. While you're seated, you don't have quite as much leverage to turn the board as you do when you're standing, and so it does take a few more paddle strokes to make a large turn. Overall though, I felt that the steering was still very capable and I was able to turn the board whenever I needed to in order to change my course. Overall, I found the Explorer 3's conversion from stand-up paddleboard to sit on top kayak to be very easy and also very comfortable to use. I think it did a great job and when you get the speed and tracking bonuses from having a double-bladed paddle, it makes it a very capable vessel for traveling long distances. The Isle Explorer 3 is a fantastic board to paddle. It's comfortable, it glides incredibly smoothly, and it's easy to keep moving in a straight line when I want it to, but it does respond well to steering input when I don't. The versatility of the Isle Link system and the kayak inversion is excellent, and the overall construction and material quality is likewise top notch. I think the Explorer 3 is a fantastic paddle board for paddlers of all skill levels, from complete beginners who want a board that's gonna grow with them, to advanced expedition paddlers who want a board that can keep up with them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I've answered all of your questions about the Isle Explorer 3. If I did miss something or you have other questions, please let us know in the comments below. In the video description, you can find a link to the full written review for the Explorer 3, as well as for dozens of other paddle boards at inflatableboarder.com. If you liked this video or found it helpful at all, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. If you are interested in purchasing the Isle Explorer 3, we'd appreciate it if you'd use the link in our video description. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help support our YouTube channel and bring you more paddleboard reviews. Thanks for watching. Don't forget your PFD and happy paddling.